Welcome back to the film and TV channel. I hope you're all staying safe and well. This is one of our regular, probably every three or four weeks, we do have a quick look at what's on at the cinema, what's what's worth watching. I think they did the last one about New Year's time, so about three weeks ago. But So we're going to have a look at uh, what's available and what's what's there to watch from weekend in Friday, the 28th of January 2022. So there's five films out there I've not talked about before previously on this, please. Uh, so we're going to check at the UK cinema, check your local cinemas and your territory wherever you are for these films but I'll just quick run down on the films if you want to get out there to the cinema and watch one please we are monetized now so if you can watch any of the ads or follow any of the links it does help this channel going forward of course my sister channel as well uh, the citizen channel which is about my football team Manchester City so if you can do that if there's anything that takes your interest you've all you've got the skip option guys if you, if you want to do that but even, even I when I'm looking at other people's vlogs etc and YouTube uh, I do think something takes my eye and I watch a bit and I even follow a link and stuff like that so if you can do that it'd be very much appreciated all thumbs up if you enjoy what I put out on here it'd be great and press that notification button and please tell your friends if they, if they like film and TV like I say I do it do a vlog, one vlog at least every day, sometimes two a day, just, just on various things from reviews to information vlogs like this one. Right, let's have a look at what's on at the cinema. Yeah, the first one, uh, I, th I think these five films, I've actually seen one. I've not seen the others, and I do... So we'll try and get to watch some of the others and do a review on them as well. Well, the first one I've not seen, A Journal for Jordan. This is a 12A certificate, 131 minutes. It's a drama directed and co-produced by Denzel Washington from a screenplay written by Virgil Williams. It's set based on a memoir, yeah, not a book, a memoir, A Journal for Jordan, A Story of Love and Honour by Dana Kennedy. Yeah, it stars Michael B. Jordan, who also co-produced it. Uh, Shante Adams in the lead roles, along with Yalon Christian, Robert Wisdom and Tamara Tooney in supporting roles. It's based on a true story. Uh, First Sergeant Charles Munro King is deployed in Iraq. He keeps a journal of love and advice for his infant son. Sounds nice. Sharing this journal with his son, his fiance, Dana Kennedy, reflects on her unlikely yet powerful romantic relationship with King. Interesting. Yeah, the scores are great, actually. Rotten Tomatoes, the public seem to like it. I saw some good public reviews on it, but Rotten Tomatoes is just 5.2 out of 10, which isn't great. And that's that's the critics, of course. Uh, but Internet Movie Database, which is Joe Public, who've been to watch this, is just 5.7 out of 10. But I have seen, I think Rotten Tomato audience really loved it from what I saw. So, yeah, that'd be an interesting one. So get out to watch that. Let me know what you think, and I'll try and do a review of that one. The next one, yeah, British film here. We've got looking forward to this. I, I've tried to, I've tried to get to watch this. I've failed miserably at the moment, but I will do. Belfast, a 12 8 to give it 98 minutes. A coming of age comedy drama. I do like a, a period sort of set in time, obviously. This is set in the 60s, of course. Written and directed by Kenneth Branagh. Stars Katrina Balfour, Judy Dench, Jamie Dornan, Kieran Hines, Colin Morgan, and the newcomer Jude Hill, obviously playing a young person, I assume. This is, I don't know too much about the film. I try not to read too much about these films so I can enjoy them more when I watch them live. The film, apart from this, which I'm doing for you, obviously that's all I try and learn about. The film, which Branner has described as his most personal film, yeah, centres on a young boy's childhood amidst the tumult of Belfast, Northern Ireland, of course, in, in the 1960s. And it's the time I was growing up, obviously I had no idea of the trouble in Northern Ireland, but so it'll be, it'll probably resonate with me as well. As I say, I was a, I was a young boy in the 60s myself so it'd be quite interesting to watch Rotten Tomatoes uh, 7.8 out of 10 very very good internet movie database Joe Public yes yeah, 7.4 out of 10 so I am looking forward to that as I say I'm not going to read or watch trails or anything like that but I do look forward to that. I'll do a review on it. I'll let you know and let me know what you think if you get to watch it. And another interesting one, I used to obviously sell DVDs. I do still still sell a few now, but obviously with the Brexit and COVID, etc., it's probably not me on the head for that business side of it now. I, I, uh, I've got plenty left, of course. But Nightmare Alley, yeah, I used to sell a lot of copies of the 1947 feature. Uh, back in the day, but we got a remake, of course, now, and I don't even, I can't, I can't even remember watching the original, guys. Please forgive me. It's one of those things that I've watched loads of these old films, but I, I may have done, I may have forgotten about it. But anyway, I won't, I won't watch it before I watch this new one. I might go back and watch the old one after I've watched the new one. Fifteen, one hundred and fifty minutes, yeah, two and a half hours, a neo noir psychological thriller. It looks great, bits and pieces I've seen. As I said, I've deliberately not watched the trailer, but I have seen little snippets when I've been uh, scanning through stuff. Direct 
directed by Guillermo del, del Toro, of course, uh, screenplay by Del Toro and Kim Morgan. And as I said, it's based on the 1946 novel of the same name by William Lindsay Gresham. And of course, uh, the second feature film adaptation to the one I've just mentioned, the, not the film in 1947, which had the same title. This film stars, well, my, my good lady would be happy she likes a bit of Bradley Cooper, Kate Blanchett, Tony Collette, Willem Dafoe, Richard Jenkins, Rooney Mara, Ron Perlman, Mary Steenbergen and David Strathane. So great cast, an extraordinary description of a freak show geek, alcoholic and ab abject and the object of the voyeuristic crowd's gleeful disgust and decision derision going about his work at a country fair. So it's an interesting premise, isn't it? Young Stan Carlisle is working as a carny, obviously a, car a carnival worker, a circus worker here in the UK, and he wonders how a man could fall so low. There's no way in hell he vows that anything like that will ever happen to him. Never say never. Say never. Rotten Tomatoes, yeah, very healthy, 7.5 out of 10. Internet movie database, Joe Public, the guys that have seen it, 7.4 out of 10. And the next one, yeah, is this the last one now? Let me have a quick look. Is this a lot? No, just a couple more yet. Uh, the penultimate one we're going to look at, I've just done a, a review on this guy, so uh, please check out. It will be available in the next couple of days. Obviously, the new Scream film, of course, informally known as Scream 5, 114 minutes, an 18 certificate. Of course, a slasher film directed by Matt Betty Nelly Alpin, I got that totally wrong on the, re on the review. I don't know why. I, obviously, I couldn't, I couldn't focus on the name properly. Uh, Tyler Gillette and written by James Vanderbilt and Guy Busick. This is the fifth installment, of course, in the Scream film franchise. It direct sequel to Scream 4, which was 10, 11 years ago now, 2011. And, of course, it's uh, not directed by Wes Craven, but it's dedicated to his memory at the beginning and the closing of the credits. Stars Melissa Barrera, Mason Gooding, Jenna Ortega, Jack Quaid, and uh, reprising roles Marley Shelton, Courtney Cox, David Arquette, and Neil Campbell. The best, best bit of the film, those guys coming back. Uh, a new killer's done the ghost face mask. Of course, he has, or killers. It didn't say that killer or killers, if that's the rules. And begins targeting a group of teenagers to resurrect secrets from the town's deadly past. Yeah. Sounds, sounds a bit deeper than it is. Rotten Tomato, 6.7 out of 10, so it did okay. Internet Movie Day Space, Joe Public like it, 7.2 out of 10. Check out my review on it, as, as I said, but uh, Scream is now out if you, if you want to go to the old cinema and jump and, and jump and shout at that one. And finally, yeah, we've got an animation. We've got to have a family film, no family film, 110 minutes. We've got Sing 2. Yeah, I think I got a little bit more with Sing 1. I'll be honest with you, it was a long time ago now, but I will watch Sing 2 anyway. It's a use certificate, of course, a computer animated jukebox musical comedy. It is a sequel. Yes, of course, it's a sequel to Sing, uh, written and produced, uh, sorry, written and directed by Garth Jennings, co directed by Christophe Ludele, and stars an ensemble cast, of course. Uh, you've got people like Matthew McConaughey, Reese Witherspoon, Scarlett Johansson, Taron Edgerton, Tori Kelly, Nick Kroll. Uh, Je Jennings, Peter Serafonovic, uh, Jennifer Saunders, Nick Offerman reprising their roles from the first film as well, those guys. So we've got new characters with new voices as well, so it never doesn't stop there. It's got a quite big budget, this as well, from what I remember. It's a lot of money spent on this one. Bobby Cannavale, Farrell Williams, Halsey, Chelsea Pereff, Leticia Wright, Eric Andre, Adam Buxton and Bono are all new, new to this as well. And like its uh, previous incarnation, Sing 2 features songs from many artists, most of which are poem, performed diegetically. Yes, yeah, so that, as in diegetically, means it's part, they know, they know the songs, and it's not something in the background for a film music soundtrack. It, they actually know in the film that it's actually, actually the songs are part of the film and, and actually reactions are part to the songs are part of the film so that's what diegetically means or diegetically means so there you go I, I sort of learned something I hope you did as well it's a set of course after the events of the previous film uh, it's not a prequel uh, a set after that where Buster Moon and his group and I say I, f I forgot how what happens in it to be honest with you put on a show in Redshaw City while working to impress an entertainment mogul and enlist a reclusive rock star to perform there you go so sing to what a bit of entertainment you like sing one, I'm sure you'll like Sing 2, uh, more of the same. Rotten Tomatoes, 6.1 out of 10. Internet Movie Database, uh, 7.6 out of 10. So the public seems to like it, the kids seem to like it, the family seems to like it. I'll, I'll get a watch of that and do a review anyway. So there you go, five films. Uh, a bit of a difference this week, wasn't it? We've got a, a journal for Jordan, uh, a basic uh, drama. Seems very sad on heroin and in another way, very sad and harrowing, a coming-of-age drama. Obviously, Belfast going to be very gritty, that, guys, isn't it? Let's be 
honest about it, looking at that uh, time. Nightmare Alley, very quirky. Uh, my sort of neo-noir psychological thriller. I'm looking forward to Nightmare Alley, and then I'll watch the old one as well. Scream, as I said, which is out there, and I won't give you my thoughts on the review, but a lot of people like it, so that's the new Scream. And of course, for you, the kids, and if you want to have a sing along and uh, enjoy, sing to is also available. So let me know if there's anything you're looking forward to, or some, one of those you've watched recently. Let me know what you think. As I say, I've only managed to see one of those at the moment. Hopefully, over the next uh, couple of weeks, I'll be able to see uh, at least two or three more of those and, and do a review on them. But uh, thanks for joining me today, guys, for this little information vlog on what's out at the UK cinema. Check your territories wherever you are, and please check your local cinema listings if you're here in the UK. They do vary slightly from cinema to cinema, obviously, and chain to chain. Thanks for watching. Have a good rest day. Have a great one. Look at yourselves. Look at your friends. Look at your families. More important, let's all look after each other. So we meet here again on the Film and TV channel. I only ask one thing, Noah. Please stay safe, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.